this is just going to be a video where I basically explain things that you can do to improve and eventually end up ranking or ranking up uh, in Smite to get from anywhere from Bronze to Grandmasters, wherever you're starting at. Um, and I'm just going to go through it. I'll have timestamps in the description uh, for each like point um, that I'm going to end up discussing. The main points uh, are basically putting your team in winning positions and just things that you can generally do to improve your value in games um, for various reasons. Uh, to start, you should really practice multiple roles for many reasons. One being you might not get your main role. You should also play multiple characters in each role. And they don't necessarily have to be meta characters, but you should have characters that you can play in each role in case you get placed into it. Um, and you should play picks that get guaranteed value. Um, so for example, if you get like ADC and you're not normally an ADC main, you could play something like Chiron, uh, something that gets guaranteed value. You can't really mess it up. You can ult somebody in a team fight and you can get value. It's pretty hard to mess up the laning phase on Chiron because you have, you're so safe with your dash, your CC immunity, things like that. It's very hard to mess up. Other things that you can play, um, for example, that has like guaranteed value is like Terra if you're support, um, like Chalk in solo lane. You can't really lose lane as Chalk. Late game, you can just ult and be a tank. It's not really that hard. Zhang Kui, you can play in mid lane. You can guaranteed get an ult off. Hoon Bots is the same way. You just farm, and then no matter what, it doesn't matter how bad you are at mid or jungle, you know, you can Zhang Kui ult, you can Hoon Bots ult from the jungle. It doesn't really matter. You can guaranteed get value. And that type of stuff goes a long way, especially if you're playing off roll uh, and you're not super comfortable on it. But you should be able to play multiple roles to at least some degree so that if you get that role, you're not just an immediate loss to your team. Um, other things you could do is play early pressure picks um, for whatever role you main or roles that you don't main. Um, because a lot of times at the lower ranks especially, um, a lot of players will fold under pressure. So if you just play a high pressure pick, you can kind of just shove them under tower, you know, get camps, whatever. Um, some examples of that would be like Ravana, Erlong Shen, um, Soul is high pressure, AMC, Tear in the solo lane. Poseidon, Medusa, like these are all really high pressure picks that want to just clear the wave and fight as soon as possible. These picks are very good uh, at the lower ranks and they tend to have a higher win rate just because you get so much lane pressure. Um, they might not be as easy to get quote unquote guaranteed value if you will, but they are easy to get lane pressure and then it can kind of compensate for the lack of value that you might get from being uncomfortable in the role. Um, other things to do to improve is just ward. Uh, I know that sounds dumb, but and wards really do win games. Uh, if you ward, you could survive ganks easily. It's better to ward, see somebody coming, and then just back than just dying. I mean, you're just gonna end up losing more if you die. As well as not like tilting and you know spam throwing up F6s if you die if you get ganked. It happens. Um, you know, especially if you're only down like you know a couple thousand gold. It's very easy to win a game, uh, even if you're down like two, three thousand gold. A lot of times, I'll get people in my games that like they get ganked once and they're throwing F6. And while it can be frustrating to get ganked, you shouldn't just immediately assume the game is over because you got ganked. Uh, check the global gold. You know your team could be winning elsewhere. You might get ganked in duo lane, but your jungler could be ganking solo. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit of a of a trade off there, and you just have to understand that you don't necessarily have to be the win condition on your team. Um, to rank up, you don't even need a 100% win rate. It's realistic that you should not expect a 100% win rate in Smite. Your goal is to try to get like a 60% win rate, and then no matter what, you'll end up ranking up if you have about a 60% win rate. Um, that's pretty standard for like high elo players. Um, a lot of them have around like 60% win rates, things like that. And that's kind of what you should aim for as opposed to 100. And just understand that not every game is winnable. As well as not everybody wants to win the game. Or I shouldn't say wants to win the game, but not everybody plays the game to be, you know, Grandmaster, Masters player, Diamond, whatever rank you're trying to get to. Some people just play the game casually, and that's fine. Um, and you just can't let that tell you. As long as you're just doing your thing and improving yourself, you'll eventually get to where you need to be. Um, other things that you can do to improve uh, your ranking and get better is just play with people, a duo queue. Um... Just invite people. Somebody does good in your game, send them an invite. You know, uh, that can always help. Looking up like metas, 
like looking like watching SPL, you know, the most recent games, whatever. You can look up like picks, uh, builds, all sorts of things like that, relics. All of that is very useful and adds up. Um, other things that you should do, uh, practice your own mechanics. Like if you are in a situation where your team is on the non-favored side, we'll say, uh, you could just use that time to practice your mechanics. Um, just try to do what you can and try to outplay people, you know, take an extra 1v1 maybe that you would normally take or something and just try to outplay somebody. It's better to be aggressive than to be, like, too passive because um, you don't really get better by being passive. Anybody can center the tower. Anybody can, you know, just stalemate the lane. If you really want to improve at the game, you need to play aggressive and challenge yourself. Um, take the 1v1, whatever. If you lose it, that sucks. Maybe then, like, if you lose, play a little bit more passive after that. But I would, it's good to take that attempt in the first place and trust yourself to, you know, do what you need to do to be able to extend your lead. Other things that can really impact the game, uh, global gold, getting all the global gold objectives, for example, uh, I don't just mean gold fury and fire giant, I mean like your totem, like soul lane totem, the scorpions that increase your buffs and give you gold, obelisks, little cups, getting all that stuff is very important. Uh, totem alone is 125 gold every time it comes up, which is every minute. Um, scorpion is about 200, 250, depending on how late into the game it is. Uh, and then the obelisk is 70 gold uh, per person, which is 350 every time you complete it. Um, so if you are getting all of it, for example, let's just say for the first six minutes, you get five totems because totem spawns in one minute. That's already, you know, 600 gold for the team. You get both scorpions, so it's another 500. So you get, you're at 1100 and then you get obelisk, which is 350. You're just getting a 1450 gold lead just from getting neutral, like, global golds. You're not doing any. You're not actually farming any faster than anybody else. You're just getting the neutral stuff. Um, on top of the additional benefits from those things, such as the trebuchet, you know, the MP5 that you get from totem, the enhanced buffs, like all of that is just a bonus on top of the global gold that you're already getting. Um, other things that you that like you can do, like securing neutral farm, like uh, scepter is really important. Um, mid camps, stuff like that. The little harp, the little scorpions, or they, they used to be scorpions on the solo side. That's like the little harpy camp, uh, the castle harpies, like all that stuff, all adds up as well. Being able to like invade ward opponents' buffs, a lot of people ward like when they do ward, they ward like defensively. If you ward the opposing jungle, um, just like on the buff timers, you'll have the timers on your mini map, and it makes it a lot easier to plan your plays out and what you want to do in the future. Um, other things, if you're like behind at any point in a game, you can just farm. You don't have to rotate. Um, a lot of times I'll have like an ADC that gets behind, like they'll die in lane or something and they'll be two, three levels down um, at like level 15. And then the other ADC will rotate level 15, my ADC is level 12, and then my ADC will try to match the rotation. Don't match the rotation. You will not do anything as a level 12 ADC. You need to just sit in the lane and farm and just tell your team to retreat. If they don't, there's not much you can do about it. But at least you can catch up and put yourself in a position to do more in the future as opposed to trying to do you know, a futile attempt on the rotation there. Unless you know for a 100% fact, you will get value out of the rotation. Just pushing the wave under tower, getting neutral farm, potentially invading a purple buff or something like that is always going to be more valuable than rotating as a super behind player. Now, if you're only like a level down, you could just tell your team to retreat. And if they don't, you could maybe match rotation. You kind of have to learn when you can and can't when you're more on an even state. But if you're at a point where you're really far down, just split push until you can catch up. Because there's not much you can do when you're, like, there's a degree where you can't do much, even if you rotate. Um, other things that you can do, uh, don't be scared to back, just back. Um, if you're poked out, you don't have to take 1v1s. You don't have to solo people to get leads. You can trade with somebody, get them 25% HP, force them to back, and then you're, you're in the lead. Like, you're already in a winning position. Um, you don't have to die or kill them, you don't have to kill them to get a lead. You can just shove them under tower, make them back, take their jungle instead. You don't have to kill them. They're not doing anything if they're behind. You could even rotate potentially if you have somebody super low, something like that. You, they can't contest neutral farm if they're behind, things like that. If you're low, just be the person that backs. It's better to back and lose you know, a neutral farm, two, three creeps, than to die because then you lose the neutral farm anyways and you lose your wave. So now you're getting even further behind by dying on top of the gold and XP that they get from just killing you. 
So just don't be afraid to back and don't be don't think that you have to solo people as the same time. So just kind of practice just getting farm as opposed to fighting because you don't really get a ton of farm from killing people unless it's somebody that's on a big killer spree. Like if somebody's like seven and zero or something and you're getting a shutdown, that might be worth like kind of inting for. But you know, for the most part, it's not really worth it in smite. Um, other things that you could do is macro call, utilize the VGS system. VGSing is pretty important, I would say. Um, you can guide your team around, call major objectives. I would rather have somebody call a, like, if you get Fire Giant, for example, if you call any lane, as long as your team is grouped, you have a better chance than everybody who's kind of doing their own thing. So utilizing that to put yourself in a winning position just as a team by being together um, is pretty important, as well as like gold furies and things like that. If you can guide your team and you have an you have an opportunity, you know maybe you force the other mid laner to back or something, the other ADC, whatever role you're playing, and you have an opportunity to do it, you can VGS use that to your advantage. And if your team doesn't follow, there's not much you can do about it, but you can at least attempt to guide your teammates around um, to a degree and feed information as well, like calling many missing things like that, um, type relics, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, does help, even if it doesn't feel like it does every game. In the games that it does help, it'll increase your win rate, which is really what you're trying to do when you're trying to rank up in Smite. Um, things that you can practice to get better if you don't want to play like ranked, for example. Something I like to do when I'm coaching people, if somebody asks for um, like coaching or something like that, uh, I notice a lot of people tend to be like scared or don't know how to exactly to get their damage off. So what I'd like to do is bring them into an assault because um, a random god, it might put them on something uncomfortable. And then no matter what god you get, just try to get top damage, for example. That's like a very easy exercise that you could do to practice getting the most value out of whatever pick you get um, in terms of damage numbers. And that's usually because when I coach people, it's usually like a mid or an ADC or a jungler. Um, and then you could do vice versa on tanks. You can just do like try to get, you know, as much mitigated as you want or whatever, but it's a little bit harder to do. You could also do it in arena, but I tend to use assault just because it's more random and it puts people in a position where they might be playing something that they're uncomfortable on. So generally that is a good exercise. Other things that you can do, um, just play like duel and practice your, your individual mechanics, um, especially at lower ends where people don't like cheese as much. When you get to the higher ends of duel, people will kind of cheese a little bit more. Um, but you could definitely, it's a good place to work on your mechanics, especially like relic actives and things like that and being able to take 1v1 trades definitely helps in that aspect. But those are some of like the big things I would say. Uh, the biggest being playing multiple roles, not tilting, global gold, and then playing like early pressure and or guaranteed value picks, I think are the most important ones. Um, and then just having fun. It's a game at the end of the day. Um, if you're not having fun, you're not going to play well. Um, and that's just what it is. So if you're having a bad day or something and you're not having a great time playing Smite, just take a break. Just a, there's nothing wrong with taking you know an hour break, playing arena or something. If you still want to play Smite, but you don't want to play ranked, um, you could still, you know, you won't take it as serious. So maybe you'll have a little bit more fun, um, but you can still practice your mechanics at the same time. Things like that are just very nice. But those are like the biggest ones. And then things that I would avoid doing if you're trying to rank up: playing really high execution picks, for example, things like Heimdall. Very high skill cap, very high execution. Things like Janus, very high skill cap, very high execution. You know, you miss a Janus ult, you're not doing anything. You don't get any value. So I'd avoid picks like that. Um, what other picks are similar to that? Like Amaterasu, it's kind of hard to get value on it. I would just avoid picks like that. Those are more like competitive level picks and things that you should play only if you're extremely comfortable on them, as opposed to just something that you should just pick normally in a ranked game, because those aren't going to win you the game. You need to put yourself in a position to win a game, and you need to put your team in a position to win the game. And if you're picking stuff that is not on the easier side, I will say, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage because you're, you're putting a lot more pressure on yourself to perform when you just don't need to do that. Um, other things I would avoid, uh, if you're in a bad queue, for example, like if you're in a game and somebody's just intentionally trolling, it happens, you know, don't tilt. But if you need to, just take an extra queue. Just wait, you know, wait for the queue to pop. And then skip that queue and get another queue. You know, just wait another five minutes. It's five minutes for your mental sanity of not having that same person in your game. 
Um, and then just understand that every game is not winnable. Um, like I said, you're aiming for around a 60% win rate is generally, I would say, a, a good win rate and a rate that will get you to Grandmasters or you know Masters, whatever rank you're trying to get to. If you're at a 60% win rate and you're just playing you know, a normal amount of games, you will end up ranking up. It might not be immediate, but you will see improvement. And then the higher you get, the more you'll improve because you're playing against better players, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Other things I would avoid. Um, those are like the big ones. Uh, dying is like a really bad one. There's always, I would avoid like blaming teammates. Um, mainly because there's always something that you can do. Um, let's say you get, you know, you get ganked, you die to the jungler. You could be like, oh, somebody didn't say anything missing. Well, at the same vein, you could be looking at your map more, you know what I mean? You could have a ward set, something like that. You can, you know, maybe play a little differently in lane, be on the opposite side of the lane. So you're, it's, it's takes longer for him to gank you or whatever. Um, all sorts of stuff. Like maybe go to a different, maybe path differently. Like if you're pathing into the jungle to the gold fury, maybe path more safe or path high, something like that. Like there's always stuff that you could do better, even if your team is not necessarily the best. And those are the things that you should focus on as opposed to what your teammates are doing. Because at the end of the day, you want to improve yourself and not necessarily your ranked teammates. And then once you get to a certain point in ranked, I would maybe sign up for um, potential Discord leagues or lower end competitive play. Um, like gem tournaments are a great way to do it if you have people to do it with. Um, you know, joust tournaments, whatever. If any of those are a good way to practice once you get to a higher rank. Um, I would avoid doing it at the lower ranks because at the lower ranks, it's more of an individual thing. Um, if you can't like solo carry a gold game, I wouldn't advise you to play a tournament that's going to have like diamond players in it, for example. Um, just because you're just going to get beat down, you're not going to learn anything. Um, so I would just 